Hey, it's Zara. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to some of the different types of neural network architectures. If you didn't know, neural networks come in many forms or architectures, and in fact, new architectures are constantly being developed. Previously, I introduced the basic idea of neural networks and discussed how they're inspired by the neurons in our brains. The question now is if all neural networks use the same core concepts of neurons, layers, and weights, why do we have so many different types? The answer is that the type of data and specific tasks determine the architecture we want to employ. You can very roughly think of it like choosing a vehicle. If you are single and want to have fun, you might go with something like a motorcycle. But if you have a family, an SUV might be the better fit. In other words, there's usually a vehicle best suited for each purpose. And similarly, different neural network architectures are better suited for different tasks and types of data. The fundamental building block of a neural network is a neuron. A neuron takes an input U and performs a mathematical operation to produce an output Y. This operation could be as simple as multiplying U by a constant, or something more complex such as applying an activation function like ReLU, or rectified linear unit, which we discussed in a previous video. To create a neural network, we can stack neurons next to each other or in layers. For instance, we might have the output of the first neuron serve as the input of the second neuron, creating a more complex function. We can add multiple layers, often called hidden layers, with many neurons in each layer. The information flows forward from the input layer through the hidden layers to the output layer. This structure is called a feed-forward neural network, and it's fully connected when every neuron in one layer is connected to every neuron in the next layer. Consider a simple example where we want a neural network to tell us if a photo contains a cat. So we need to decide if our network's operations and number of neurons are sufficient after training to distinguish whether the photo has a cat. A neural network that works well for image classification may not be the best choice for other tasks, such as identifying spam emails and vice versa. Here's a quick analogy. In linear regression, we have a predefined function, y equals ax plus b. During training, you adjust A and B, also known as the weights, to best fit your data, but you're still limited by the linear form. This is roughly the same idea for neural networks, where the architecture influences what kind of functions can be learned. Let's now discuss some of the most common neural network architectures. I'll just briefly introduce the general structure of each and feel free to let me know in the comments if you'd like me to dive deeper into any of these. Feed-forward neural networks are the most straightforward type of neural network and it's what we've primarily been discussing so far. Data flows forward from the input layer through the hidden layers to the output layer. Some example use cases of feed-forward neural networks include simple classifications such as determining if an email is spam or not, and basic regression such as predicting house prices using features like the square footage. Feed-forward neural networks are generally easy to implement, but they are not always suitable for data with strong spatial or temporal relationships such as as image classification or sequence modeling. Convolutional neural networks or CNNs are commonly used for image or grid-like data. They rely on convolutional layers, often combined with pooling layers and fully connected layers. The idea is to use small matrices called filters or kernels, which slide across the image to process patches of it. For example, a 2x2 two two pixel filter moves across the image to detect patterns and features. This allows us to detect features like edges, textures, and other patterns. Note that the weights of these filters are learned during training. Some use cases for CNNs include image classification, like recognizing if an image contains a cat or not. They are also great at handling translational invariance, meaning it doesn't matter where the cat is in the photo, a cat is a cat. CNNs are also used for object detection. 
For example, self-driving cars use CNNs to identify pedestrians and other vehicles. Additionally, CNNs are used for image segmentation, such as identifying specific regions or organs in medical images. CNNs are very effective for capturing spatial patterns, however, they typically require large amounts of data to train. While CNNs handle spatial patterns, RNNs or recurrent neural networks are designed to handle sequential data, such as audio signals or time series data. Their use has declined recently with the rise of the transformer architecture, which we'll discuss next, but it's still important to understand the idea behind RNNs. Unlike strictly feed-forward networks, RNNs introduce feedback loops, where the output from one neuron or layer can feed back into previous neurons or layers. This gives the network a sort of memory. A popular variant of RNN is the Long Short-Term Memory, or LSTM network, which selectively decides what information to keep at each time step, enabling learning over longer time spans. Some use cases of RNNs include language modeling, such as predicting the next word in a sentence, machine translation, such as translating sentences from one language to another, and handling any sequential data, such as stock prices and weather forecasting. Transformers are a newer architecture that use self-attention to process sequences in parallel, unlike RNNs. They have become the state-of-the-art for natural language processing, or NLP. And if you didn't know, the T in ChatGPT stands for Transformer. In addition to NLP, Transformers are also used in computer vision. Transformers were first introduced in the 2017 paper by Google researchers in the paper Attention is All You Need. They were initially designed for language translation, but their key innovation, the self-attention, enables models to understand language, grammar, and context effectively. For example, the two sentences, the ceiling fans were spinning so fast, and she has a lot of fans on social media. In both sentences, the word fans appears, but it has different meanings depending on the context. A transformer can distinguish between the meaning of the word fans through self-attention, since it considers the entire sentence contextually, even as the sentence or context length increases significantly. There's obviously way more to transformers than this simple introduction, and I'm actually still learning about it myself. If you would like me to dive more into the transformer architecture, please let me know. It's also worth mentioning that in my field, engineering, there is a growing demand for physics-informed neural networks, or PINs, which integrate physics-based principles directly into their architecture and training process. Their architecture embeds prior knowledge of physical systems and carefully designed loss functions that enforce adherence to physical laws. And as I mentioned, this is just a very general overview of some of the different neural network architectures that exist and are commonly used. I'll be linking a couple of resources for you in the description if you would like to learn more about any of these. And in the next video, I'll be doing a simple coding exercise to demonstrate neural networks in action. I will focus on feed-forward and convolutional neural network architectures as those are generally the easiest to learn and implement.